start it yet. Hey, you don't have to wait for them. Go ahead. <laughs> We're waiting for the, for the screen. I'm down there. I'm getting there. It's already open. My script's already all messed up because I was going to start with good morning. Mm. <laughs> Just down there from there, John. Sorry, oh, sorry. Here, sorry about that. Today. You guys have the remote over there? You do, Donna. Good afternoon, Town Council, budget members. Uh, my name is John Trottier. I'm the Director <coughs> of Engineering and Environmental Services for the Town of Londonderry. Uh, with me this morning is Dave Wally. He's the Director of Public Works and Municipal Facilities for the Town. Uh, we're here this morning to present our fiscal, our budget for fiscal year 2025. We'll, pre we'll be presenting budgets for the following three divisions, the Solid Waste Recycling Division, Sanitary Waste, and the Highway Division. Under our org organizational chart on the public works and mis municipal facilities side, there's, again, Dave is the director. Uh, we have a foreman, three assistant foremen, three equipment operators, and six truck driver laborers. Uh, Paul Schatt, uh, just, uh, again, uh, the uh, highway foreman, he's been with the town for a total of 39 years. On the engineering and environmental services side is myself. I've been with the town for 22 years. Uh, beneath me is a vacant position of the assistant director, that position has been vacant for approximately a year and a half. Uh, also beneath me is the environmental leader, engineer, Bob Carey. Bob's been with the town for 13 years, and below Bob is uh, two drop-off center attendants. They're part-time employees. Also assisting us in the, the, uh, the department is uh, the department assistant, who is Donna Lamoli, who's behind me. She's been with the town for 18 years. And our administrative assistant is uh, Denise Manella. She's been with the town for three years. On the solid waste side of things, I'd like the environmental uh, division, solid waste, the division is responsible to oversee and manage the following. The curbside collection of household trash and recycling, the seasonal drop-off center operations, the household hazardous waste collection days, the waste oil collection program and the school recycling program. Uh, the environmental division is responsible for the solid waste and recycling, uh, which is the single largest vendor contractor within the town of Londonderry. For fiscal year 2025, we're budgeting $2.7 million. On the solid waste I line items, this illustrate 16 line items of the solid waste budget. The majority of these costs are associated with the solid waste operations, salaries, benefits, <coughs> office supplies, and certifications requirements for the town's employees. Those are the employees that, that uh, work down at the drop-off center. Two line items that I'd like to discuss further with you are the waste collection line item of 1.9 million and the uh, recycling services line item of $812,000. Under our waste collection services for fiscal year 2025, we're budgeting $822,000 for the solid waste collection curbside services. This represents a 5% increase to the collection and transportation, which is per our contract, and it includes a, a number of new homes that we uh, basically make a guesstimate every year of how many new homes we would anticipate coming online. On the solid waste tonnage, we're estimating 9,000 tons at uh, $90.37 for disposal costs. This also represents a 5% increase to the disposal per our contract, and obviously the quantity is variable. The, we are including, allocating an additional 50 cent increase for our fuel adjustment factor. That also is per our contract. We're carrying $30,000 for carts. Those uh, carts represent new homes, replacement carts, and then just a, a matter of fact, those carts, some of the carts that are actually out on the street are, are pushing 14 years old. They've been out on the street since 2009. We're carrying $40,000 under our household hazardous waste collection day. And as a reminder, that day is two weeks from today up at Laffa Fields, for those that care to, to use that service. Our sharps disposal, we're carrying $2,300. That's a new line item. That is the... Uh, that is, that service is, is uh, used pretty regularly by the residents. Again, it's a, a red container that's upstairs here on the second floor for people with uh, uh, used sharps, and they can deposit them in the, into the container and 
town takes care of the, the disposal of that. And lastly, under the drop-off center, we're carrying a $170,000 for fiscal year 2025. Question real quick. Yeah, yeah. For the Sharps container, has there been any thought to move that to the first floor so that people may be able to access it after hours when upstairs gets locked? The thought is, Ted, we're actually going to be moving it over to the police department and putting it next to their, where they have a container that they, they accept the medical. Wonderful. Group. Yeah, so it's just a matter of coordination and so... Hopefully, before the by the end of the year, I can get that coordinated and over to there. That's awesome. Great. Thank I'm you. Sorry, just to, Justin. I'm not seeing these numbers in the in the budget book. Yep. Um, so I, for this department, I accidentally grabbed FY23's budget. Um, I apologize for that mistake. But uh, essentially, it doesn't. All it changes is the amount of the increase from last year. The FY25 budget numbers are correct. Uh, the FY24 reflect FY23. Mm -hmm. um, the difference actually drops down. $164,000. Yep, but for the total department, it totals uh, $298.77. Um, that was brought to my attention and too late to fix it. So I apologize for that inconvenience. Thank you. On the uh, recycling contract side of things, curbside for fiscal year 2025 we're budgeting five hundred and ninety one thousand dollars for the collection and transportation of the uh, <laughs> town's recycling that is five percent increase per our, our contract and includes additional new homes coming online under the recycling tonnage we're estimating twenty seven hundred tons at seventy three dollars and thirty five cents again that is the increases per our contract quantity is variable and it again is carrying uh, additional new homes coming online. And lastly is our fuel adjustment. Again, we're increasing it by 50 cents per the contract uh, for, again, a total of $812,000 uh, up for basically 7% off of uh, above 2024 budget. Just some interesting facts that I want to share with everyone. Uh, again, so we always talk about you know, curbside trash, and John is a good advocate of, of all this. So our, the scope of the curbside trash and recycling services, again, it's the most visible service with stops made at every residence in the town once every week and twice every other week. The current contract that started in 2016 and is the largest scope of trash and recycling services ever performed by the contractor within the town of Londonderry. We have over 9,065 gallon trash carts and over 9,095 gallon recycling carts were over 18,000 carts that were deployed within the town. So we have approximately 13,500 carts collection each week within the town. So what does our solid waste budget buy us? So our current curbside uh, collection began again in, in July of 2016 Today we have two, we, or since we've had 613 new single family residents have been added uh, as of the end of fiscal year 2023. 288 new residents in multifamily complexes requiring dumpster ser services have been added again uh, during this time frame. Our annual trash tonnage has increased by 700 <coughs> tons to approximately 8,900 tons as of the end of fiscal year 23. And our annual recycling tonnage is held steadily at approximately 2,600 tons at the end of fiscal year 23. Basically, the material is getting lighter. Uh, therefore, the volume is increasing. Mm -hmm. So for fiscal year 23, the cost per household was $16.40 per month or $3.78 per week. And our projected cost for households for fiscal year 2025 20, is $17.50 per month or $4.08 per week. So repeat that again. It's about a seventeen dollars per month per household. Correct. For I mean, both trash and recycling. Correct. I mean, if we went to private companies, I know people in Derry who are paying, you know, ten times that or more per month. That's incredible. I think that's a huge service for the town of, of London Derry. Thank you, John. Quick question for you. Yeah. Has it was any discussion in the budget about the drop-off center extending the hours or keeping it open? Um, Throughout the year? Not at this time. Okay. Well, We're still that? opening for recycling only uh, right after Christmas, right? 
I'm correct. There, there was the intent. So there was that one opportunity yeah. so that if you have a bunch of cardboard and recycling, you can go there. Um, I think it's the weekend right after Christmas or something along it's those lines. It's all weather dependent. Right. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my head. Just, just to add to that, Ron, we, that is one aspect of the DPW spatial analysis needs that we are going to also actively look at yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can have a, a better understanding as to what that would look like. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further? For John, do you have anything further? Hey, I'm, just, uh, I'm just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 12.30, time's up. <laughs> Works for me. Let's go. <laughs> I'm the other department. Before he changes his mind. I started Let's at 12.12. 12. I get uh, 10 <laughs> minutes into it, buddy. <laughs> uh, listen, you got to yell at the other two departments. <laughs> Good luck with that. They ate up all your time. Hey, remember... <laughs> Blue and red yeah. follows yellow. Yeah. You remember that. And, next and, year. And, and, and again, you need to speak to them. They obviously weren't paying attention. <laughs> they were the firemen. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and, you know, and none respect. of you better look to check out a book anytime soon. It's not a non grata. Uh, I will now uh, present the, uh, the, envir the sanitary sewer portion of the budget. Oh, we, got, we have one of those? Uh, yes, we do. There's some interesting facts on that, too, John. You'll, you'll appreciate that. Uh, this that, budget... That, that, that's a really inter entertaining number. <laughs> that, the, the, oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking right over there. Yeah, this budget is, is paid for by the users of the sanitary sewer and is an enterprise fund. Uh, this does not affect the tax rate. For fiscal year 2025, we're proposing a budget of $5.7 million. Uh, the next slide reflects personnel costs such as salaries, benefits, et cetera, of $193,000. It's up approximately $16,000 or 9%. On the uh, sewer non-contractual items, what you see here is, again, if I can just draw your attention to the first line item, uh, the sewer usage services of $1.5 million. Those costs are, those costs reflect what it costs the town for uh, the city of Manchester and the town of Derry to accept and treat the town's wastewater uh, from the town. <coughs> the third line item, the sewer management services of $440,000. That is the cost for our consultant costs to perform general engineering <coughs> services, overseeing our inspection and cleaning and repairs of our sewer system, our, any sewer rate analysis or facility plan update that uh, we may be undertaking as well as performing some uh, pipeline analysis. Uh, and then the last line item, again, just to bring your attention, is the last line item, the sewer repairs and maintenance of $248,000. Again, that covers the vendor costs for weekly preventive maintenance visits, any meter calibration that, may have, have, that we may have to have done, operation of our SCADA systems, wet well cleaning, emergency and non-emergency repairs of our sanitary sewer system. John, does that include the new one that's being installed along um, Pillsbury Road for uh, servicing the Woodmont area and the 102 area? So that you, you will see on the next, uh, the next slide, Ted, you'll see the, the $2.6 million. I meant the, uh, the maintenance and repairs. Um, that, that will be, again, we don't anticipate for that to occur until uh, spring of 2025. Okay, great, thank so, you. So, um, continuing with the uh, sewer costs, again, there's 10 items here. Uh, these, um, again, just the, they're, they're pretty stable. Uh, again, the 2.6 million was for the, Gil the Pillsbury Road pump station. The sewer machinery and equipment line item of $543,000. Again, that's per our intermunicipal agreement and is up about $25,000. That reflects the town of London area's share of the upgrades in, at the Manchester Wastewater Treatment Facility per our intermunicipal agreement and the additional uh, purchasing of additional capacity at the Dairy Wastewater Treatment Facility per our intermunicipal agreement. So as I did a little earlier, just some interesting facts about our sewer budget. In the past 10 years, there's been 413 new sewer accounts that have been added, representing a 30% increase in the number of sewer accounts now serving 3,020 residences and businesses within the town. Our first quarter of fiscal year 14 was a total sewer accounts of 
1,436. In our first quarter of fiscal year 24, we have a total sewer accounts of 1,849 accounts. The division maintains and operates the town-owned sewer collection and transmission system, which consists of 43 miles of sewer, over 800 manholes, six pumping stations, $60 million in assets, and the, our in, uh, environmental engineer, Bob Carey, is on call 24-7. We coordinate construction of replacement and new town-owned sewer collection and transmission systems. We administer and enforce an industrial pretreatment program within the town. We have 75 industrial sewer accounts that requires permitting and periodic inspections. And it's one of the largest programs in the state based on the flow uh, to our sanitary sewer system. Who's larger? Good Lord? No, I said who's larger? Oh, who's larger? Um, I think may possibly the city of Manchester. They're the only one larger? Uh, uh, it'd be, I would have to look into it, but it is one of the largest. Wow. We implement and maintain the sewer ordinance, sewer use, and permitting regulations in our intermunicipal sewer agreements, as well as our sewer billing program. We review sewer development proposals, write permits, and inspect sewer construction. And lastly, we comply with state city and federal rules and regulations. The environmental uh, division's role is to be good stewards to the environment. I'll proceed now with the highway division fiscal year 25 budget. For fiscal year 2025, we're proposing a $4.8 million budget, up 169,000 or 4%. The uh, Town of London Dairy, uh, Highway Division is responsible for the operation and maintenance of approximately 191 miles of road, seven bridges, 4,807 drainage structures, and 63 miles of uh, drainage pipe. This slide here il illustrates 10 light items that illustrate personnel costs, salaries, benefits, and et cetera. This is of uh, 2,000 or excuse me, $2 million. This is up approximately $67,000 or 3%. <coughs> Under our non-contractual items, this is, uh, these are 12 line items that illustrate costs associated with the highway budget. We're holding the line on 11 of the items. We're requesting additional $40,000 for management services, and that being, uh, as Mike had indicated, for uh, to catch up, do some catching up with our storm, our MS4 stormwater requirements. The next slide is our, uh, excuse me, is our non-contractual items. It's continued. Uh, these 12 line items uh, reflect uh, costs associated with the highway budget. On this, we're holding, uh, holding the line on nine of the items. Uh, we are asking for an, an additional $56,000 under our, our highway road maintenance line item. So that brings us to a million dollars. Back when I first started back in 2001, and John, you probably remember, we, would, we were getting typically about 500,000 for uh, road maintenance, and then we were getting another 500,000 for uh, Shimano or for highway pavement. So, that, so this will get us back up to that million dollar mark. Uh, Dave can elaborate further on uh, signs and uh, highway sand. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> during last year's budget cycle, we made some important strides in right size in the budget for two of our most important areas, that being vehicle maintenance and salt. Uh, we are grateful for those adjustments as they directly impact our department's ability to effectively respond to emergencies with the most reliable equipment possible and make sure that we have adequate supply <coughs> for those emergency materials on hand. Um, just as a reminder to our department now oversees, manages, and maintains all eight cemeteries, five municipal buildings, the town common, and the drop-off center, as well as additionally assist in the police and fire departments and the Leach Library should any maintenance uh, needs arise. Mm -hmm. This year we just have two small, smaller monetary adjustments we are seeking, but they are important nonetheless. Um, our sign line items were $18,000 in 2010, and then reduced over the years to where it is today, at currently at $8,000. Uh, currently, we estimate, as you go around town, that about um, 
50% of our street signs do not meet the MUTCD compliance for the size and retro reflectivity, but we continue to upgrade in, uh, as budget restrictions allow. We have over the overspent this line item four of the last five years, as you can uh, see as we track this year to year. The one year we didn't overspend was 2020, uh, that was due to COVID. We are seeking to increase this line $2,000 as an attempt uh, in, to keep up with the rising costs in the last 10 years and allow us to continue working on upgrading signs around town. Um, and you know, as the fire department was talking about earlier too, with the uh, amount of seniors in town and whatnot, uh, we think it's important to make sure that our signs are, are visible with the limited lighting we have out on the streets. And this time of year, whereas tonight we're gonna be, you know, daylight savings is coming to an end. Um, it's probably more important this time of year than ever to have those signs uh, upgraded as well. John, real quick, on your highway uh, department expense supplies, um, as you're consistently spending about double what you're being budgeted, uh, any reason why you're not asking for that to be increased? On our Would department. And uh, as well for the gasoline fuels? On department ex expense, on, on the fuel as well as the the supplies. Which line are you on now? He's, he's asking about the top, top, back the top two okay. here. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, we just went with the default budget level, level spending at that, but we made the adjustments that we needed on the maintenance side of things last year, where was we were at 50,000, we went to 100,000. Uh -huh. So as we are now being a little bit more able to put the, the pricing of the repairs of trucks to the actual area on that, then the department supplies should be okay as well. Uh, and what about we for gasoline? There. And what about for gasoline? Uh, the gasoline, I think, is really driven a lot by the finance department as to what, what we use and whatnot. Um, we're up in our department a little bit because of the trucks. We, we have a couple trucks now, but... Um, but also, I think, yeah. again, we had uh, f uh, more storms out too this right. year. Right, we did. So it's it's always kind of up and down. Yeah, and, and that okay. falls in with yeah, diesel fuel and whatnot too. It's not just gasoline. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave, you want to just complete on your sand? Yeah. Um, so in regards to salt, we actually have some good news. Um, the first time in quite quite some time, we've seen a decrease of about 5% over the average of the two contracts that we utilize with state bid uh, pricing. Um, so the, with the upcoming season, we'll have a price of $76.90 per ton on average. Um, with the adjustments we've made to salt in the last two budget cycles, uh, we are now in line with the expectations of expenditures at $290,000. What has not been adjusted back to a level more in tune with our needs for our department uh, is sand. So in 2010, our budget was $35,000 and it's been reduced over the years uh, to where we're currently at at 25,000. While the price has gone from 960 per ton to 1850 per ton um, since 2016. So it's been kind of a balancing act, whether if we buy salt or buy sand and where it comes, but with our salt being more in line, it's, it's um, probably more important now than ever to get the sand uh, budget to where we need it to be. Our sand pile has been depleted extensively uh, through the last couple of years, so we do plan to replenish it back to the levels that we need it at. Um, and also is important to understand the type of precipitation, especially in the last, I'd say, five years or so, um, we're, we're continuing to see the storms start more as rain, sleet, freezing ice, uh, mixed in with snow, and then back to rain. Um, so while salt is the more effective uh, type of material to deal with, we do use, do use quite a bit of sand, averaging about 2,800 tons per year. So uh, understanding budgetary challenges, we are respectfully requesting an additional $5,000 allocation for sand, which will actually only bring us to when 42% funded of what is actually necessary to buy that 2,800 tons of sand. So we're just uh, looking for that nominal increase uh, over the next several years to get us more in line with what we're using. So what did we do this year? Some road projects that were accomplished for during fiscal year 23-24. South Road, we shimmed and overlaid a portion of South Road, Harvey Road, High Range Road. Uh, we shimmed and overlaid Hillside Ave. We shimmed an overlaid portion of King Arthur Drive, shimmed an overlaid portion of King James. 
Litchfield Road, we've completed the uh, most westerly end. To, now that we have completed Litchfield Road, we're ready to start back at the easterly end. So it's just, it's, we're all, we'll always be at it. We've shimmed and overlaid a portion of Otterson Road, shimmed and overlaid Shasta Drive. We've reconstructed uh, Sunrise Drive, shimmed and overlaid a portion of Webster Road, and shimmed and overlaid uh, Woodside Drive. So of all these, we accomplished the pro this, this entails about six miles worth of roads of, within the town that we, we did some shim and overlay of this year. So what do we have up our sleeve for next year, fiscal year 24-25? Again, this is largely dependent on the severity of the 23-24 uh, winter season and how the roads fare. Again, our goal is always to keep uh, good roads in good shape and rebuild roads which are in bad shape when funds are for reconstruction are al allocated on a year-to-year -year basis. So the three main roads, again, that I have in mind is, again, Bancroft, Parmenter and Trolley Car Lane. Um, that's what I have kind of envisioned thus so far this year. Within our list, though, we have a number of roads that I've kind of kind of put on the back burner because with all a lot of the uh, in the water infrastructure, there's a lot of these roads that, that are on the list. But it's kind of crazy to to shim and overlay these roads before they they get out there and they re start reconstructing it or constructing water in them so it doesn't make any sense so I know what those lists uh, that list is and I'm kind of putting it on the back burner for now um, David I think David would like to continue with the vehicle replacement program yep don't ask for that speedy car <laughs> yeah the flight car the flight car <laughs> um, let me guess you want a fly truck yeah <laughs> be nice we don't have to worry about so much salt um, Today I bring forward from the vehicle replacement program uh, four items for consideration. Uh, two large six-wheel dump trucks, uh, one four-by-four one-ton dump truck, and then one backhoe. Uh, but before I get into reviewing each piece with you, um, it's important to understand the vehicles have been somewhat deferred in the last few years. Uh, although last year, I tell you, we made some really good headway um, by replacing um, three large trucks. And, and just for your understanding, those large trucks won't even be here until about next summer. So the vehicles, uh, we will still be plowing with those older trucks that were um, allocated and approved by the voters in March. And, you know, you heard the fire department talk about their lead times, and that's the same, similar experience that we have as well. You know, with COVID impact, it was, you know, almost 16, 18 months, and we are now, there's been a little bit of improvement, but it's about 14 to 16 months before we'll see a, see a truck. Um, it, it, a lot of that is, you know, obviously the, the vehicles come in, the cabin chassis come in from the, uh, from the factories and whatnot, but then when they get here, they got to be built. So the, the dump body's got to be put on, all the plow packaging <coughs> and labor costs and shortage of mechanics and whatnot kind of, you know, plays into that. Um, so there was supposed to be another three large uh, dump trucks uh, this year in front of you, that being that we have three 2013 trucks uh, that are coming up. Um, but, you know, we don't really prefer to have three trucks in a year. No, we were, we were trying to get caught up last year quite a bit, so um, we're grateful for that. But to then, you know, implement another three this year, we, we thought that would be making the, the future a little bit more problematic if you have two groups of trucks uh, coming up for replacement. So we've d decided to defer one of them out uh, another year because in 2026 there's only one large truck. Uh, in the mix. So that will get us back to just two this year and then two in the following fiscal year. And that will get us back on, on track to where we like to be with two trucks in a, in a cycle. Um, <clears throat> as I've previously stated numerous times too, having a, a reliable and ready fleet uh, that is a well-oiled machine is vital to our department's need. Um, we are considered first responders and um, without us, uh, like we were talking earlier, red and blue do follow yellow, so without us out there having the most reliable equipment, um, they can't do their job as well. So um, the safety of the residents traveling in Londonderry is dependent upon our ability to continually plow and treat the roads that not only uh, protects them in their travels, but meets the needs and requirements, both necessary, as I've stated, for fire and police departments. 
Um, I urge you strongly to continue supporting the equipment replacement program for the years to come, and I'll, I'll get into each, each truck now. Um, so this is one of the two large six-wheelers that we're looking to replace. It is a 2013 uh, dump truck, uh, wing truck, if you will, as well. Um, as of the beginning of, uh, or end of September, we had 46,000 miles on it in 5,622 uh, hours. <clears throat> it is in fair condition. The uh, reason we don't list it as fair poor really is because um, we did some engine work on this truck in uh, 2019, I believe it was as well, so we, we had to sink some considerable money into this truck. Um, and, and in particular, um, this one as well was one of the ones that broke down in that large snowstorm at the end of the last year uh, that really hampered our operations as well. We weren't able to get it back up at all. In, in 2013, this particular model, um, a lot of the EPA guidelines were changing on the, the, the emissions controls and whatnot on diesel trucks, and um, it, it's pretty much an industry problem with the EEG coolers and whatnot, so uh, there's still very, we've come a long way in the last you know, 10, to 10 to 12 years in, in improving that, uh, the, en the engineers and designers of these things, but, but these still tend to be problematic on this particular uh, group of trucks that we have. Um, one thing you also notice too, you heard again, like the fire department talked about costs. So last year, these trucks, you see replacement costs. We've we've moved it up to two hundred thousand um, per truck versus the one ninety that we were at last year, because where we saw the pricing come in on the bids this year um, on replacing of the vehicles. So we want to make sure that we're we're allocated and budgeted correctly. What what makes it difficult is, you know, we trade these trucks in as trade in value, so. <coughs> When they're looking at our trucks as a trade-in value, you know, they know that they're not going to really get that truck for 18 months. So they know we're going to be putting it through another winter as well. So it, it, it makes it difficult on them, and the bidding didn't fare too well this year on some of the trade-in values that we expected. So um, we can go to the next truck on, on this one, if we could. So um, this is truck 10, similarly. Um, and uh, I had a hard time illustrating this, but if, if you can see it, you know, pictures three and four, um, you know, you can see a lot of the associated plow equipment. Those are the hydraulic uh, pumps that run the back end of the truck and the conveyor and the, and the spelter, spinner and whatnot. And you can see a, a lot of that rust build up and corrosion and activity. And um, last week when we had the budget committee down there, we toured, um, I was able to just walk right up to it and, and peel off pieces of metal and, and hand it to the budget committee and, and whatnot so you can see that. So I try to capture some of that in the photos, but that's difficult to, to see. But, um, but you can see also in the steering components, you know, the, the, the arm there, uh, a lot of the pitting and whatnot, and then the undercarriage and whatnot that carries all this corrosive material that we use. It's pretty prevalent on this truck. On the back end, you can see all the paint peeling off and whatnot. Uh, and we do the best we can to keep up with that and you'll see that perhaps in the next uh, slide. Dave, yep. with, um, I know with like our personally owned vehicles, they can spray the un under undercarriage and mm -hmm. stuff for lengthen the, uh, the time of, of service. Do we do that with these trucks and is so it worth it? Th there's different products out there, but uh, truthfully, no. I mean, a lot of that stuff that you spray on, uh, again, we're in construction. So the minute you get a scratch through that coating or whatnot, it, it, it really is irrelevant. And it's costly as well, you know. Um, okay. I mean, you can. There's, there's, there's different things that you can do, but, you know, it's, it's a few grand to the do for a truck. The cost the And as soon as you get one rock or, you know, when you're doing construction in the summertime and gravel and whatnot, and that's th th those types of products are more for just, you know, like you said, on cars and whatnot, not so much construction. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. There's, but there's plenty of salesmen out there that will sell you just about anything. I'm you sure want. there is. <laughs> Trust me, they come in routinely. Um, so the importance of this is uh, th this particular truck right here. This is truck 14. So this is one of our four one-ton dump trucks, and these these one-ton dump trucks are really our workforces uh, workhorses in the fleet. These go out every day, uh, year-round. Um, this is where our our crews transport to and from job sites, um, go out and patrol their routes, you know, haul some materials and whatnot. We do put salters uh, in these as well during the winter months as well. 
and, and, and at least two of them act as a backup so that when a large <laughs> truck goes down, we can go and grab one of these uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment's notice. But they don't do nearly the amount of work that the larger wing trucks that do, like we were just talking about. Um, so when I was taking pictures of this, uh, I had a hard time, you know, capturing what's going on here, and that's why I think it's great. So if anybody wants to come down and look at the vehicles in question, I'm happy to show them up, up close. But we demonstrated this with the budget committee the other night because we just restored this body uh, this summer, and maybe I should have put some of the pictures and the conditions that the employee had to go through to get it to this condition. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, if you look up close, that's why I put the arrows in there because it really is uh, just paint, you know, kind of over. We did some descaling and, and rust prohibitor and stuff like that and scoured it off, but we're just putting it, putting new paint on there to try to slow that down so that the body isn't, isn't uh, degrading so much. And then slide four there, uh, you can see that's the hydraulic tank for the truck. And even though we painted it black, you know, in the front left side of it, you can really see that there's quite a, an extensive bit of, of corrosion there and, and rot on the truck. And... Uh, right now, we're well over 100,000 miles on this truck, and with Ford, um, like they said, there's you know the, the strike does impact uh, ordering Fords. Um, we saw that with the current utility truck we have on order from last year's replacement program, and uh, but it, hopefully that won't impact the ordering of this truck. But nonetheless, Ford is uh, does take quite a bit of time, not as much as the larger trucks, but we still look at about a one-year wait on these. Uh, on these on this type of style truck here and then the next slide uh, is our backhoe and if you recall last year we had we had moved this up in our replacement program because we just didn't have the money uh, budgeted so we moved this into a condition of fare uh, from last year we did do that work on the back end of the backhoe uh, nonetheless when we kind of had some further looking into it there's going to be some more extensive uh, work that needs to be done in the back end of that machine. Before we made that kind of uh, commitment, we know that we're we're right at where we need to be uh, on the 15 years as far as this uh, piece of equipment is concerned. Um, that being that it's a 2010, um, so by the time we receive it, we'll be hitting its its life expectancy as scheduled, and we'd like to hold that um, hold on that line and not push it out any further than we need to just because of the, the types of significant repairs that we see coming down the line on, on this particular. And it's our only backhoe. So when you only have one, yeah, we have an excavator, but that's a much larger machine, does a much different type of work than, than this machine does. We use it quite a bit down at the uh, drop-off center as well, making sure that each one of the roll-off dumpsters is packed as, as full as we can get them. Um, so... You know, when you only got one machine, you want to make sure that it's one of the best ones that you can have and available for your department. Um, and that is it for equipment replacement. If you have any questions on, on that, I'd be happy to answer them. Or anything on the, the, the entire budget. Budget overall. Anyone? Um, what is the plan for... I'm sure probably the most complicated road is Bancroft. What is your general plan for Bancroft? Again, need to... Need is it to just the top end, one per, uh, one part of it? Is that the whole area? Is it just shim and overlay? Is it... No, again, it, it would be... I'm looking at full be, full depth reconstruction of the roadway. It's in, definitely in need of that, Ted. And I'm again, sure there's quite a bit of coordination with... Um, Utilities. Ever source and the utilities for moving those poles and moving the lines. So moving that'll stone be walls and moving the contacting stone walls. people. Again, a, a lot of that roadway, we do have additional right of way that was granted when people were subdividing those parcels. Again, we're forward thinking, so we always ask people, again, give us additional right of way that way in the future when we do need to do some roadway widening. Again, the tricky part is just the, the westerly end of Bancroft where they that woman's uh, walkway comes down into the almost into the roadway yes so uh will any of that work be coordinated with um uh the the sewer pipe absolutely so that's why it may not all occur at one time okay great and, and again as you know the the upper part has been re uh, full depth reconstruction has occurred and as that's like a major cut through for a lot of people and a lot of trucks, will you guys be posting Absolutely. more signage at both ends of the road so that 
all of a sudden someone doesn't get there and be like, oh, no. Yeah, similar to what we did up top on the east of the end. We had closed the road to through traffic during the day and mm -hmm. opened it up at nighttime. Okay, so great. Well, there'll be some coordination. Wonderful. Anything further? Mr. Chairman, we did it in 12. It, I have. You uh, guys get the award for 40 that. minutes. <laughs> you get a star next year. Hey, next year, <laughs> you remind me, because I may or may not be the chairman because I'm getting tired of doing it. Um, yeah. you know, but you remind minutes. me to advocate for you going first next year. <laughs> you hear that, Mikey? <laughs> now y'all know what he calls me. <laughs> Mikey. We'll, we'll call him Johnny. <laughs> just don't call me late for dinner. Thank you. Uh, well, listen, we're all just hoping you don't get lost on one of those walks during the day. No, no, no. <laughs> don't hit me. I won't get lost. Oh.